Mary Pete, Annie here. Welcome back to Tarot Together. I will put in front of you a copy of the Rider Waite full card. Now let's explore the symbols that are part of that card. Before we leave the relationship of the fool and his wand, there's something that I read in a book someplace, I don't remember where, that completely fascinated me because it referred to the tiny leaf that the fool holds in his right hand, where his right hand is holding the wand. Well, I pulled out all of my writer weight versions of the fool card. I didn't see a tiny leaf. So, I went online, looking for it. It took quite a while before I found an image that I could increase to the point that I'll be darned if I didn't see this tiny leaf held in the fool's right hand, right up against his wand. Okay, now I admit, even though I'm showing you this picture, it's hard to see, but right above his thumb, see that tiny little bit of greenery. The sources that I was reading said that this was a throwback to the Tarot de Marseille, which highly influenced Waite's tarot deck. So I went to get a clear picture of the Fool and the Tarot de Marseille. Some versions don't have the leave, but some do. As clear as all get out, you cannot miss it. Especially if I enlarge it for you. So this tiny leaf, it fascinates me. Maybe because it's so tiny and it's sometimes missing, and I certainly never would have seen it on my cards and had never heard reference to it before. The reference that I saw for it referred to it as a symbol of eternity. That magical black staff that has, oh, such a heavy, mystical, esoteric meaning all about finding the hidden things and initiation and birth and rebirth. It also has such a powerful, simple, natural element. The wand, no matter how costly, Waits reference, is a creature of the earth, a wooden staff, and that tiny leave, a reminder of the poignancy, the balance to that ever so sophisticated and heavy description of the staff as an object of initiation, birth, and death. That little leave making it feel more like the simple, the most simple lessons that earth and living has to offer. That little leaf could be the key to understanding what lies at the other end of the staff the mysterious wallet. That leaf could also be the map to his journey. He has, after all, it appears the cards tell us, been this way before. I like imagining the back of that leaf as that tracery, that veining, literally the road map to the journey. I hope this fascinates you as, as much as it did me. I wonder how many of you came across reference to the tiny leaf in the hand of the fool. It certainly was new to me. I wish the teachers I had had when I first studied were still alive so I could reach out to them and say, did you know about that tiny leaf? I have a feeling my first teacher did because she knew the Tarot de Marseille very well. Oh, but she never mentioned it to me. Now back to the fool in the Rider Waite deck. We'll go now to his left hand. He's holding a white rose in his left hand. A very common golden dawn symbol of silence and the rebirth that rises from that. 
the existence that's free from animal forms of desire, a state of purity, promise, and beauty. The rose as a flower is a symbol of new beginnings and hope. It reminds us with its thorns, there'll be a price to pay for those beginnings and the way through what comes. But it's a symbol of the beauty that's ready to come into existence. Imagine the unfolding of the petals of the rose. A reminder of the importance of taking the opportunity to experience what is around us. Within the Golden Dawn, the white rose represents cultivated, controlled, and balanced desire. The power of experiencing all levels of desire, but deciding what of them will manifest. That's reinforced in the rose that's held in the fool's left hand, symbolized by the two leaves on either side of the stem two being the number of balance. Each of those leaves, though, has three sections. And to achieve balance, it could be said that those three sections to the two leaves represent the process of balance, physical, emotional, and spiritual balance. Is this what the fool takes in to his journey? his way forward, or is it something that he has learned by having been there before? We might take a hint from the fact that the rose is not a closed, tight bud, but it's also not full-blown and open. It appears to be in the process of opening. Perhaps a hint that the fool the journey he's about to embark upon, his step into the abyss, is a continuation of his own unfolding. The white rose is also a symbol of pure love. Do we know if the fool is searching for it? Is it lying in wait for him in his journey? Or is he carrying it with him? Does he already have it through the journey that has brought him to this point again? Or could it be that the fool himself is love? And now, on to the fool's dog. This little creature packs a wallop of meaning in symbolism. He may represent the animus. That's the infusion of physical reality an animation, movement, direction. As fascinating as that, that ability to be so present in reality, the dog is also a symbol of death in mythology. He is a symbol of the inner self, which has gone through a transformation, has died, and is reborn. The dog is white, and in this instance, as a symbol of death, his color tells us that he has been cleansed, he's whitened, remember that pure white of the sun, he's without burden. He's white light, representative of spiritual perfection. He's also as a dog, a symbol of faithfulness and exuberance, and also as the wolf, aligned to the dog. A teacher in life. A teacher that also exhibits aspects of fidelity, honesty, loyalty, and truth. He represents instinctive forces draws our attention to what we might not have noticed, especially if we had our head 
in the clouds as the fool appears to, or even if we were not in dream mode, perhaps in far too logical of a mood. He appears young, bouncy, and happy. Other tarot decks, he's older. He makes a different presentation. He might be leaping at or biting off a piece of the fool's pantaloons or holding on to him, holding him back or dragging him forward. But that's not the dog in the Rider Waite deck. He's definitely appearing as a companion. We look at him, though, and we wonder, is he blindly following the fool out of love? Is he willing to go wherever the fool goes? Or is he a messenger? Is he trying to warn the fool about the impending cliff? He seems awful light-hearted in art. It almost seems to me that he's encouraging the fool, or if not encouraging him, at least being there step by step with him. He's not hidden or behind the fool as he shows up in some other decks. He's right there next to the fool, and we assume the fool is aware of his presence. He does have an aspect, though, that he can't be shaken off. He's going to stick right by the fool's side. He appears to be willing to jump off with the fool. So he's very much aligned with and one with the fool. He certainly manifests the idea of leaving fear behind. If we think of the dog in other tarot decks, where he might be a dog or a wolf or even a tiger, biting at the heels or the backside of the fool, holding the fool back by fear. This happy dog has a whole different relationship. The white dog has a connection to the sun, that white sun, the source and the unification of all colors, light from a superior source, pure spirituality, the sun of spirituality. So he could represent spirit itself partnered with the fool. The embodiment of the purity and the innocence which appears to be the fool at a spiritual level. Unlike the dog and the wolves that will show up again in the moon card, which seems to have a fear or a concern about death and endings, this, the fool's dog, is fearless about endings and eager to leap into them right by the side of the fool. I look forward to your additions, differing opinions, especially what you can share that I simply did not know about the symbols on the cards. Selfishly, I started this series because I wanted to learn and grow. And that will be thanks to the comments that you offer to the discussion. As always, comments are welcome below and they're welcome on our Facebook group. There's links at the end of this video.